All right. <laughs> Inside HilltopperSports.com podcast coming at you. We're back, baby. Sean Williams here. Tyler Mansfield in the house. It's been a while, man. How you been? Sean, it's been a long, long time since we've done one. That's why I've been kind of hestering you. I said, hey, man, it's time to do a podcast, some kind of video, something. We've seen each other, people, but at camp and stuff, but haven't been on screen in a while, so we're back. You just want to see your face. That's all it is. I mean, it's, 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 that's one reason. <laughs> all right, we're excited. Obviously, uh, football season is just around the corner. It is, well, uh, just a little over a week away. It's kickoff for UT Martin on a Thursday night. Um, Tyler, we've been to a lot of the practices. You've been to more than me, obviously. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about storylines from fall camp and everything like that. Thanks for kind of watching. But first, this podcast is sponsored by our guy, Kim Waddell. Tyler, take it away. Hey, Kim Waddell, he's uh, proud to have him on board again this year. He's one of our title sponsors for all of our coverage. He helps out with our travel funds and just keeping our site afloat and helping out with things like that. Uh, Kim Waddell's a REMAX, uh, phone number 270-779-5379. Looking for a buy a house you can call home, um, want to sell, wonder how much your home is worth. Let Kevin Waddell with Remax Real Estate Executives help you through the process and make your home buying or selling experience go smoothly. Uh, you can call or text Ken any time of day. Uh, he's, he's available. He's, he's a younger guy. He's, he he likes to talk to people. 270-779-5379. Uh, Ken's actually got a, a stepson on the football team, Coach Jackson from South Warren. Uh, doesn't get a lot of playing time yet, but he's been at practice. I've seen him out there. Ken's been there quite a bit, so uh, we thank Ken for being on board with us again this year because we have plenty of exciting coverage coming. I like how you call Ken a young man. I'm sure that makes him feel really good, too, man. I mean, hey. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all right, we appreciate Ken a lot. I mean, obviously, for uh, advertising with us and helping us out on the site and everything, uh, so we're super, really super appreciative of him. That's the second year he's been doing this for us, so uh, really excited to have him back on board this year. Um, yeah, and Tyler, uh, fall camp, we're in the middle of it. Uh, it's about to end. We're about to get into game week. Um, what have you seen from fall camp so far? What are some storylines you kind of follow? What are some things you're kind of looking at as we're kind of rolling to the first game of the season here? Yeah, you know, it's been a good fall camp so far. We've, we've been there quite a bit. I think I've been to 10 or 11 practices so far. So we've seen all the kind of different positions and um, kind of new guys there because all kinds of transfers came in this year. Big storyline is Bailey Zappi quarterback from Houston Baptist. We've seen some good things out of him. Obviously, Hilton named him the starter at media day, so he didn't wait any time doing that before camp started. I've seen some really good things out of him. Um, I actually, they had a scrimmage game last Thursday night, I think it was, and um, we actually have to see some of that scrimmage. We got there for interviews. Usually, we're, we're locked outside. can't see much, but we're able to come inside and just see a few things, and Hilton even asked us after the scrimmage. He said, hey, guys, off the record, what'd you like out here? So we, we talked to Tanner for a little bit about things we saw, but there was one play in that scrimmage where uh, the, the drive started on the opposing one-yard line. Bailey Zappi gets a snap. He steps back for a second, waits in the pocket. I mean, just offensive line play was great. He unloads a deep ball, goes 55, 60 yards down the middle of the field. I think it was Daywood Davis from Oregon that caught it. can't remember exactly, but it was just a three-play, like a quick three-play drive, scores. Uh, he was on key all night long, the first-team offense. Uh, first-team defense looked sharp. Uh, there were some second-team offensive guys that really stood out. Carson Baker was one. Um, wide receiver, well, quarterback Grady Robinson, he's a, a second-year freshman now, listed as a quarterback, but he's been playing some receiver during camp just because there's so many quarterbacks on the roster. And he's an athletic guy. He had a big Randy Moss-style catch down the right sideline for about 40-something-plus yards. That was cool to see. Hilton really liked that. We saw him yesterday at practice talking to uh, Robinson after practice, kind of getting some tips there and stuff. So the quarterback playing receivers, one big storyline we've been catching through fall camp. A few other things, um, a lot of depth this, this year. Running back room, we talked to Carlos Lachlan, the running backs coach. He's a first-year guy here. There's seven or eight backs that can really play. He wanted to say that instead of being by committee, they'll do, uh, you know, main backs, obviously, Adam Cofield from North Dakota State. He, he won that job. But there's guys behind him, too, with Jakari Moses, Noah Whittington, um, so many other guys. They brought in Jamaka Ruthers from Navy. He's a transfer, a local kid. Talked to him yesterday. Um, his interviews are posted all over our, our website, YouTube channel, to go check him out. 
Same thing with the wide receiver room. The Stearns brothers, we did a feature on them. They're two guys from Houston Baptist that will play quite a bit. Um, we asked about how they loaded the receiver room up because there's so many guys, but there's a lot of talent to maybe have two platoons maybe from, you know, one play comes out, bring another platoon in because there's Stearns brothers, there's Ben Ratzlaff, there's Daywood Davis, um, so many other guys transferred in. Some D'Angelo Wilson from – um, Austin P. he's a local Bull Green kid that played with Jamal Carruthers. He comes in here to the system. So many, many pieces. Um, we talked about all the offense, but that was the next storyline to things to correct this year. Um, they threw up an offensive last year, I think 19 points a game. So obviously that new system with Zach Kitley in the mix, new players going to be real key to watch this year. Defense has been just fine. There brought some guys on, on that side of the ball as well. Brought back D'Angelo Malone, Juwan Jones, guys like that. So I think it's an overall good mix um, of talent on both sides of the ball, good staff. And I think this will be a kind of fun season to watch. We'll see how things turn out. Uh, obviously, things could change. Players could still transfer or not be happy and leave. So we'll see what happens. But throughout fall camp, we've seen some good things. And now it's coming to a close. Um, last practice of fall camp, I think, is officially today. I think that's their, their end of it. They did like a mock game week, so to speak, this week. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of days off for just weight lifting and kind of team related close practices. And then we'll start game week stuff on Sunday because they play next Thursday. So literally we're almost a week away tomorrow from game day. So ball camp's been good, but now it's time to get into that, that season stuff. Yeah. You mentioned uh, the offense. It's a little bit of a new look this year. You mentioned the wide receiver depth. I mean, that's huge because last year you had like two of your best wide receivers transfer in the middle of the year, you know, when the season started. So, it's a little bit of a way different story this year in terms of depth and talent. And, um, yeah, I mean, the, the offense, I think, is kind of the big issue right now. It struggled a lot last year. You know, you, you said 19 points a game. That's uh, very unacceptable. And Helton made some changes pre uh, pretty quickly uh, when it comes to that offense and uh, brought in a lot of guys to uh, maybe help change that. I know they want to run. You know, with Zach Keatley and that Houston Baptist offense, it's uh, fast pace, high tempo. They want to go 80 snaps a game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to watch, see how explosive this offense is. You've got a lot of depth at wide receiver. you got some really good running back. you got really good talent at O-line. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to be the thing to watch. I mean, uh, I think – I think, you know, defensively, I think you um, – I think that Western's going to be just as good as they have been in the past. I mean, you know, they're, they're missing some key pieces. Obviously, Ricky Barber transferred out. You know, Debbie, mm -hmm. he's not in the secondary anymore. Roger Cray transferred out. So, you've got some pieces that are missing there. But uh, I think overall the defense is going to kind of be close to what it has been. Maybe a little bit of a drop-off. But I think uh, all eyes are on the offense. How explosive can they be? Um you know, obviously Zappi set a lot of records there. He's got, a, you know, like three of his wide receivers here that he's familiar with. Uh, Daywood Davis, you mentioned him. He's a guy that Zappi mentioned in the uh, media day that's probably the fastest guy on the team. Um, so, you know, you expect him to get the ball a lot. So uh, a lot of excitement around a new look WKU offense heading in here. So um, curious to see how it goes. I mean, UT Martin's kind of a good uh, first step. You know, you, you're you're playing an FCS team, so you can kind of go out there and, and um, you know, see what you got right off the bat, a team you're expected to win. But obviously, you know, you look, Western, the last few years, they've had some issues with some FCS teams. So yep. it's not a given, not a given. But you expect uh, WKU to, to pull out a win here against UT Martin to start the season off, right? That's what I mentioned in my uh, preview of UT Martin. I said in the beginning, I was like, listen, their FCS school, yes, but look what happened with Maine with Mike Sanford. Even Central Arkansas, Helton's what, first game as a head coach. I mean, they literally had a, had a lead there and blew at the end. I mean, it's just – they have the FCS curse right now. Um, so, UT, UT Martin, I mean, they're – on paper, they are a team that played just in the spring this past year. So, they're a team that's kind of fresher than Western is, obviously, because of the FCS spring season. Uh, they bring back some guys. Um, obviously, like I said, FCS, but they have some talent. Uh, they'll be ready to play, of course, in that first game of the year. Uh, and then you want to keep on the schedule talk, non-conference-wise. I mean, after UT Martin, you turn around and you play Army on 9-11 in West Point. That's going to be a huge, huge primetime game for them. Uh, Army was, you know, ranked last year, what, I think 9-3, and three, receiving belts category this year coming in. And then after that, you got a week off. Then you go and play um, Indiana. 
He'll play Indiana at home. It's going to be a huge, huge game. Um, they're obviously ranked 17th in the AP preseason poll. They're going to be really, really good coming in, bringing back a lot of talent, especially the quarterback, uh, Michael Penix Jr. That's a big, big preview there. Then you've got Michigan State as far on their homecoming night, October 2nd on the road. So, I mean, you open with UT Martin, you got to get tuned up. Then you got Big Ten, and you got, I mean, not Big Ten, in a, a Army team, independent, and two Big Ten teams, you know, back to back there. You got one bye week in between. After that, you're kind of just jumping right to conference play. So, the non conference schedule will get them ready for conference play, no doubt. Um, they could be one and three starting conference play. They could be two and two. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be tough to beat IU. Michigan State, obviously, they're not the best Big Ten team, but they will be good. Obviously, they're talented. Um, and, of course, a road game on their homecoming, Pack Stadium, under the lights and the night game. So, it'll be big, too. So, we'll see how things go there non-conference-wise. Uh, Sean, your thoughts, non-conference schedule? Yeah, I mean, non-conference schedule is super aggressive, really. I mean, you got UT Martin. You hope to get a win there. We talked about how they've had issues with FCS teams, but hopefully they can put it together and, and, and get a win to start the season and figure out, you know, um, against another opponent, how this offense works, you know, some tweaks they can do, um, and, and even the same thing defensively, too. So, you know, uh, you hope you get a win to start off the season right. Armies, you know, you mentioned, hey, they might go two and two. Well, they might go two and two. If they did go two and two, they Army would probably be the other win. Uh, I don't see them beating Indiana. You know, I mean, that's a huge game for them. And I think, I think the thing with Indiana, they're going to come in here. They're probably going to be ranked in the top 25, which is cool, you know, and that, that creates a lot of buzz. And you want those type of home games at WKU. I mean, it's really cool that it's happening. So, um, all the chips are kind of falling in the right place in terms of scheduling Indiana and them being on the uptick in the Big Ten and, and nationally, too. So, um, I think with Indiana, it's going to be just a – it's going to be kind of a gut check in terms of how you are as a team at that point. You've got two games under your belt. Can you hang with Indiana for a while and, um, you know, keep it close? I mean, I think that's going to be kind of the measuring stick for Western Kentucky against Indiana. Um, same thing with Michigan State, too. I know they're not the greatest team. You know, they were 2-5 and five last year. Uh, had some troubles offensively. So there's, you know, there's some issues there. I mean, you can take advantage of defensively. And, and you know, that's another test. Can you score on a team like Michigan State, uh, you know, with your offense and, and keep up with them and maybe score an upset at Michigan State? I'm not expecting that to happen. But, I mean, anything's possible in college football. Like I said, Michigan State struggled a lot last year, especially offensively. So, I mean, they got, they got, the, they got issues there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, the best case scenario, and I think it's very possible that they go two and two in this non-conference schedule. I think the Army games come, look, Army's always tough, but Western's always beat Army in recent past. So, um, you know, I think it's going to be a tough game, though. I mean, you know, the matchup's going to be weird. You know, you play that triple option mm -hmm. uh, offense. So, um but I think that's a, that, that's, a, that's a game Western can definitely win. So I think, I mean, if you're two and two in non-conference play, that's awesome because you, you're playing a ranked team. You're playing two power five teams, you know, in Big Ten teams. So uh, to give them away two and two. And if you can hang with those, with Indiana and Michigan State, I mean, that, that's, that shows you some good progress right there going into Conference USA play. I think you're right. And after speaking of Conference USA play, I mean, they, they start out with UTSA. Uh, UTSA is one of the best CUSA's teams coming into the season. So it's not like you leave non-conference and go to some weak CUSA school. UTSA is a team that they hardly ever play. I think it's maybe – Where did Tyler go? Okay, uh, Tyler froze there for a second. Now he's reappeared, so uh, now he can continue with his uh, conference play talk. Uh, <laughs> you yeah, were I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah, we are back. Tyler, you were talking about UTSA. Obviously, you kind of roll over into two tough non-conference games against uh, Big Ten teams. And then uh, it's not like you roll into the Conference USA Cupcake Division, you know, like against Middle Tennessee. Uh, you actually were playing UTSA, and they're really good. So carry on with your thoughts there, man. Yeah, and this is a team that Western hardly ever plays. It's like, I think, once or twice, maybe three times they've played before. Um, UTSA, Frank Martin – not, excuse me, Frank, not Frank Martin. Frank Harris, their quarterback, has been around for a long time. Uh, running back Sincere McCormick has been listed on almost every single watch list offensively. 
Um, those two guys alone are dominant duo, uh, two of the best players in Conference USA, and they are really, really good. And they were good last year. I think UT Martin, not UT Martin, good Lord. It's been too long since doing a podcast. I'm saying the wrong teams right now. Um, I, need UTSA, pause again. I need to hit pause again. <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, UTSA, I mean, they, I think they were, what, what, eight or nine games last year. They were right there up in their top of Conference USA mix. They're a great West Division team. And they're coming to Bowling Green this year. It's going to be a tough, tough, tough CUSA battle for WKU. Um, UTSA is going to be fun to watch. They score points. They're explosive offensively. So the Hilltoppers defense will have their hands full that night. Uh, looking at other big-time CUSA games, obviously Marshall this year is finally – it's the last game of the year, how it should be every single year. You play all year long. That's kind of your, your final game there. And this year, again, it's back at Marshall, Huntington. It's always fun going there. Um, November 27th, I think it is, right there Thanksgiving week. It's going to be cold. It's going to be a great, great football game. Marshall brings back uh, quarterback Grant Wells. Um, a lot of defensive guys, a lot of offensive guys. New head coach this year, uh, Doc Holliday's not there anymore. Brought in a new coach, Charles Huff. So we'll see how, how they play together there. They have the talent to play. Look at them. FAU's a team that people have been talking about. Uh, coach Taggart, obviously, there. Um, last year's kind of a, you know, weird season with COVID. Uh, didn't play many games. There were a lot of cancellations, but they've got plenty, plenty of weapons. I think their quarterback battle had three or four guys listed in it. Um, one of them is Taggart Jr. Uh, Nick Tronti's back. He's played some there for them. Um, Rice, that goes to a team that's they've been struggling, and now we're in the struggle category. Rice, um, <laughs> Old Dominion, Middle Tennessee, those three teams, FIU as well. FIU went 0-5 last year. They had looked awful. Um, Old Dominion didn't play a game last year. Their last game played was like November of 2019. So there's some teams there that, that should be easy wins for Western this year. Obviously, it's a new season. We'll see how things progress and work out. But those three teams, you're looking at obvious wins there. Um, but Marshall will be tough. FAU will be tough. Um, Charlotte's team kind of on the come up. I talked about my, my feature, my preview on them, excuse me. Uh, will Healy's team has some players there. So we'll see how they look. But non-conference wise is tough. Your main CUSA games are UTSA, Marshall, FAU, um, maybe Charlotte, and then the other – other, other opponents on the CUSA slate, kind of obvious, should be wins. So I'm looking at a, maybe a eight and four season, if we're doing projections. Eight, I think eight is the kind of the, the medium, medium gas there. Because um, I don't see them winning just six. I don't, I don't see them winning nine, but I think eight's a great number. Seven or eight in that range will be good, I think. Yeah, I'm, I was sitting there looking at the schedule, and I didn't really, like, make any predictions. I'm just going down through here looking. Say, okay, two and two, best-case scenario, non-conference. Uh, definitely see wins against Old Dominion, FIU, uh, Middle Tennessee, Rice. So. That gives you six right there. Yeah, and I'm thinking they'll, they'll get another win, a definite win there against maybe Charlotte or something like that. I'm saying definitely low ceiling here, seven and five, uh, eight and four would probably be a, a, a good, like you said, I, I like that prediction. Uh, I think they'll definitely go seven and five for sure. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a possibility they go nine and three. Mm -hmm. Which is better than seven last year. Right, right. So, you know, hey, look, nine and three, I think is kind of your high ceiling too, you know. Uh, yeah, if they can get a – if they could somehow just lose one conference game. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Maybe, there, there's a chance that could happen because, obviously, if they can open up a UTSA and after playing, you know, a Michigan State team in Indiana, like, all right, this, this, this ain't bad at all and beat them. And then you knock yeah, out – you're, 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 battle, you're battle tested going up against those two Big East teams. And that's what I said, you know, like if you play those teams pretty tough and, you know, it kind of shows a lot about your team when you go roll into Conference USA and, you know, a hey, UTSA might roll into Western Kentucky and, you know – uh, it might be a blowout either way. You never know, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're going to see how good this offense is going to be right off the bat against UT Martin. Uh, we're going to see how good it's going to be against Army. You know, I think Army is going to be a tough tough defense to go up against. But uh, it's going to be tested early on. But I think uh, if the offense is going to be as good as everybody thinks it's going to be, I think you got a 7-5 and five team for sure. You know, eight and four is a good medium. Nine and three is kind of like your high ceiling mark for this season, I believe. Maybe I'm being too optimistic, man. I don't know. Hey, 
I think you're exactly right. I think, like you said, anywhere from seven, seven low, nine high, that will be good. Eighth, right through the middle. Uh, that'll be an eight and four season. Get a nice bowl game somewhere. I think uh, Reverend Murphy's first initial early, early bowl projections have Western BYU and Shreveport. So, I mean, it's not a great place to go play. It's not the nicest place, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good bowl game right there. Uh, like I said, um, <laughs> ball camp's ending. I think one more feature coming out for us um, tonight or tomorrow on a, on lineman, and, and after that, it's it's game week stuff. So next Thursday, we'll have our game coverage and go from there. It's crazy. Uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to put out a poll and see um, what other people think about uh, season predictions. But uh, yeah, I mean, you got you got to think nine and nine and three. You're on a roll starting Conference USA play. I mean, seven and five, eight or eight and four. You're gonna have a hiccup there. One or you know, a couple of times, mm-hmm. maybe, you know, against, uh, you know, UTSA or Marshall, you know, I'm, you know, so one, I think one of those, uh, one of those better conference USA teams are going to be tough. They're going to be able to, you know, beat Western at least once, but yeah, it, it, it's interesting. The season predictions are always uh, fun to do before the season. We'll, we'll get to see how stupid we look or how smart we look. And uh, we'll figure that out as the season goes along. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, um, good stuff with Tyler. Um, just talk about uh, some things we're going to have on the site as we roll into game week here for UT Martin. Yeah, so like I said, fall camp stuff, we put it all together in our fall camp central page. So if you haven't saw anything yet or just missed some things, scroll through for video interviews from our YouTube page. You can see all of our future stories we've done so far. Like I said, about one more coming out. Yesterday we had a uh, talk with Jim Elk Brothers, D'Angelo Wilson, the hometown kids. I some notes on them and their interviews. Um, but game week stuff, uh, so Sunday, we'll do – start next Sunday, we'll start doing our game week stuff. We'll have a, uh, hopefully a beat writer Q&A if I can find someone from UT Martin that covers them, kind of get their perspective on UT Martin. Student paper. The, student paper. Student paper. <laughs> would be a big one. Uh, we'll also have uh, our, our, our friend Hannah, Hannah Page will be doing her Analyzing the Enemy in-depth feature – I mean, an in-depth preview of each opponent this year. Um, I'll have my game coverage as usual during the week. Um, maybe a feature or two during the week as well on positions or a player that excelled the week before, things like that. Uh, we'll do staff predictions on game day morning like we always do. Um, I think that's, that's really about it. We'll do a podcast a week. We'll start doing some of our um, – uh, yeah, yeah, Sean, yeah, we'll do a podcast a week. Uh, there's times we'll do like some uh, – Sean's got a cool setup now on YouTube. We can do um, – we can share screens, do more graphic stuff, uh, more, more interactive. So we'll use that quite a bit this year do some more just video and audio podcasts like this, like simple stuff. Um, we'll be at every home game. Um, I'll be traveling to some, of course, Marshall, that, that's a given. I'll be there this year. Um, I might try to go to one non-conference game. Uh, Army's not going to happen. That's just way, way too far away. He's hard to travel to. We're looking – Michigan State will be one that will be um, okay to get to if you, if you want to drive there. So we're talking about things like that, but especially – We'll be at the we'll be at the big close conference road games for sure and all home games. So looking forward to it. we'll have plenty of coverage. Also our, our good friend Ryan Dearbone, I'm sure he'll have his um his um five takeaways from each game because he's the hilltopper guy. So we'll have plenty of coverage for you. Yeah, I need to make sure he's gonna be able to do that. I haven't I haven't secured that bag yet, but I think he will. So Oh so, yeah, for sure. For he's sure. Good with his uh, five things learned, I mean that's a pretty nice little hot topic on uh, on the site and on Facebook and stuff when we share it. So, um, yeah, so it sounds good. We're ready for another season, man. Are you excited? We're pumped up. I think this is year. Uh, what is this? Year year six of covering him. So I, I guess, man, I can't yeah. really getting up there. Getting up there. But yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> ready to get rolling. I mean, it's fun doing this preseason content stuff. We get plenty of it going, but when games start playing, that's when it gets real. Right, so. right. Yeah, and like I said, you know, uh, all the excitement's going to be around, you know, how good this offense is going to be. It's going to be as explosive as we think it's going to be. You know, we'll find out, you know. And, you know, Zappy put up some great numbers in SCS, but now he's kind of moved up a level. So, mm-hmm. you know, is that going to be hard for him and those other wide receivers? He's got plenty of weapons, though, and there's a ton of weapons on offense. And it uh, should be exciting for Hilltopper fans to watch this season. So, we'll be there to uh, – to bring you the coverage all along the way, and we'll uh, sometimes we'll show our pretty faces here on YouTube, and uh, and we'll talk about it once a week, right? At least once a week, maybe at least more. once a week. Sometimes twice if it's something big happens, or you know, if we're doing a little yeah. recap video or something. So yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. 
for Tyler Mansfield. I'm Sean Williams. Inside Hilltopper Sports Podcast, episode one for the season. We're done. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.